Okay, the bridge. This is it, Falcon. This is the day we make our stand. Everything is coming together. As we speak, Fontaine is gathering the protesters at the Place de la Concorde. Piero is making preparations to build and arm a barricade near the Palais Royal, just as a precaution, you understand. The only question that remains is, are you ready? Uh, yeah, sure, let's do it. Absolutely. Bring on the revolution, I say. That's the spirit. <laughs> Come on, let's see how the protest is going. Okay, Falcon and Beaumont arrive at the Place de la Concorde. The air is thick with the chants, shouts and cheers of hundreds of protesters. Who's this on the right here, sneaky sneaky face? A line of mounted soldiers stand shoulder to shoulder outside the entrance of Tuileries. This is amazing. I had no idea the Second Republic had this many supporters. But of course, you didn't think there were just a few animals huddling in the cave, did you? The desire for revolution runs deep in the city. There he is. Everything's in place at the Palais Royal, ma'am. Just say the word and we'll set up the biggest barricade you've ever seen. Then we can all storm the building and drag that cocky king out of his chair. Okay, change of plan. We're still going to protest, but we're going to do it peacefully. No firing from behind the barricades, no violence, no capturing the king or prime minister. What? Are you feeling okay? Quite alright, thank you. And what of your desire for a better France? You cannot achieve that without bloodshed. We can try. Falcon, convince me. Falcon? Pacifism seems like the Christian approach, wouldn't you say, Fire? <laughs> I see. So that's how it is. Excuse me, madame. Off he goes. I think the Friar disapproves of the new strategy. He probably thinks I've gone soft. Maybe I have. But I'm not deviating from this path, even if each and every rebel leaves my side. Don't worry, ma'am. You're not alone. We're not here for the violence, madame. As long as you strive for a better France, we will always stand with you. Okay. Ah, oh, this stupid bullet wound. This guy's... He's got bullet wound issues. This damn thing's opened up again. Okay, what's the news? Is everything in place? We got a problem. Mademoiselle refuses to use violence. She's turned timid. Turned timid? How? It appears that the lawyer, Falcon, is something of a lion tamer. JJ Falcon? That bird is proving to be more trouble than the rooster, I swear. Brother, listen. If there is no violence, there will be no power gap. One leader will just peacefully replace another. We need chaos for our plan to work. I guess we'll have to follow through with our contingency strategy. I'll find the victim. You find the suspect. Okay. Don't push yourself. You're still injured. Hmm. Look at those scum. Foul vermin. The lot of them. Mark my words, Barrison. Every one of those petulant dissenters will take the first opportunity to turn aggressive. They lust for violence. Yeah, they don't look too violent to me. Trust me, this is just how the crowd looks before the July Revolution. It only takes one crazed individual and the entire crowd would explode into a frenzy. This dude. Friar, it's good to see you again. No time for pleasantries, Inspector. You're needed urgently on the Place de Concorde. This guy's a shit stirrer. Oh my god, he plays all sides. Me? Why not ask one of the officers on active guard duty? No time to explain any minute now. Ah, oh, do you hear that gunshot? It's already begun. I didn't hear nothing. Come on, Inspector. We must make haste. Inspector, I really don't think you should be trusting this friar. He's a two-faced wolf. Frere Remus has provided me with reliable information in the past. I trust his judgement. Inspector, listen. This isn't up for a discussion, Sparrison. I have a duty to uphold. Stay put. I'll be back in no time. That dude's dead. Oh my god. What do I do? Sparrison, think of something. Alright, either way. Into action. Things are happening. Gunshot. It was nearby too. So the friar was right. Violence really is an inevitability. We haven't reached that stage yet, madame. I can't afford to take chances, not now. Piero, march the crowd to the Palais Royal and construct the barricade. Yes, ma'am. Fontaine, Falcon, we're going to find the source of the disturbance. Okay, what's happened? It came from here, Inspector. Hurry, hurry. I'm moving as fast as his old legs. What? Who's that? Mon dieu, a body? He just shot some some girl. This woman must have been the target of the gunshot we just heard. I don't see the shooter. We know it was the other wolf. Come on. 
I think the gunshot came from over here. Inspector? Falcon? Well, well, I should have known that the Viridian Killer would have had a part in this. Inspector, I'm not that dude. Okay, here's everybody else. What do we have here? A filthy cop and a dead girl. Madame, thank goodness you're here. I saw the whole thing. This poor, innocent mademoiselle was approaching the police line with her hands in the air. When all of a sudden, this brute of the police inspector yelled, Get back, you filthy rebel. He drew his gun, shot the bird point blank through the heart. What is this nonsense? What are you prattling on about, friar? Thanks for your input, Remus. It hardly surprises me that a member of the police would be the one to cast the first stone. Okay, I think we're all being a little bit rash. Take a breath. Examine the situation. Wait a sec. You are an eye patch. You only have one eye, Inspector. Okay, how observant. Tell me, were you the policeman who killed the rat at the holes too? There's holes? What are you talking about? Two incidents of one eye policeman gunning down an innocent victim. There's no way that this is a coincidence. What we have here is a filthy, corrupt individual who takes pleasure in oppressing the common citizen. Am I right, Inspector? You're being set up so bad right now. I really shouldn't be surprised that a stupid rebel makes stupid assumptions and comes to stupid conclusions. But open your damned eyes, Mademoiselle. I'm not the assailant here. Don't call me Mademoiselle, or stupid for that matter. Your guilt is plain to see. Given the circumstances, I ought to judge and execute you right here and now. Falcon, don't just stand there, Gorkin. Vouch for me. What? I know this man. His name is Inspector Valerti. He is ruthlessly law-abiding, so much so that I can't envision him shooting a man without just cause. Shut up, Falcon. I'm done with your idealism. I listened to you. I took your words to heart about avoiding violence, and now the girl is dead. Well, I'm done taking chances. Remus, help me escort this invalid to Piero's barricade. I'll decide his fate there. With pleasure, madame. Come along, Inspector. Fontaine, Falcon... Deal with the corpse. Meet us at the barricade when you're done. Uh, there's... There's no way that this was the work of the police. You know what, Falcon? I think you might be right. An isolated gunshot this far away from the police line. It doesn't make any sense at all. And this guy's a gun nut. He knows his guns and his strategies. That's rebellions for you. They're messy affairs. Sometimes innocents get caught in the crossfire and there's no reason for it. Dude, no. Well, no use dawdling. How do we get the corpse off the streets? Not yet. I'm going to examine the body first. Examine it? We agree that this wasn't the work of Inspector Valerti, right? That there might be some clues on the corpse that point toward what happened. An impromptu coroner's examination. Fine. you got two minutes. After that, we're heading to the barricade. Whether you're done or not. Okay. Let's examine what we got. A blood stain, her hand and her face. Everyone's been so fixated on who did to this that nobody stopped to ask who the girl was. I don't know, monsieur. Given her clothes, she's probably just another working girl. Just another? I didn't mean to sound glib, but it's true. This is one mademoiselle among the thousands who live in Paris. Okay, who was she? Where does she work? Will her family miss her? I don't know, but in the long run, I don't think anybody's going to care. I care. I can't afford not to. I don't know who this mademoiselle was, but I'm going to see to it that justice is brought about for her death. Okay, let's check the blood stain. This is the bullet wound. What can you tell me about it, Fontaine? Well, it looks like the bullet took a fairly straight angle of entry through the mademoiselle's back. The shooter was probably standing right behind the victim. What's the bullet size? Do you know its calibre? Let me guess, you're hoping that the calibre of the bullet is different to the calibre of the inspector's gun? Uh, that would conveniently get the one-eyed police officer off the hook, wouldn't it? I'm afraid I can't help you. I couldn't possibly know a bullet's calibre without having a good look at the bullet itself. And as you can plainly see, the bullet is three centimetres deep in flesh. So, you can see the bullet then. Let's get it out. Help me retrieve the bullet, Fontaine. Retrieve? You mean dig it out? I assume you have a little bit more experience in this area than I do. Well, you're not wrong there. Fine. This will have to take a moment. Bam. Let's get this squidgy thing out. There you go. One used bullet. Looks like a standard lead rifle or pistol ball. But I'm afraid I cannot tell you its calibre. Why? The bullet fragmented upon impact, monsieur. I gathered all the pieces. I cannot assess its diameter with any accuracy. Still, I would guess that it's 13 to 17 millimetres. Sorry, I can't be more specific. That's good. Thank you, monsieur. Got some evidence. Okay, what's, what's her wrist? It's a long shot. But maybe this girl is faking her injury. 
Just for the sake of thoroughness, I really ought to check for a pulse. I just dug a bullet out of this girl's body. She's dead. I'm sorry. No, nothing. Is that... I think that's everything. Nothing on the... Just a quick browse. Oh, what's this? A handprint? What's this mark? Yeah, that's a handprint made in blood. Probably the Mademoiselle's. I don't think so. It's the handprint on the left hand of the girl's left shoulder. There's no way a person could comfortably reach that spot on their own back. I guess, but if the handprint doesn't belong to the girl, then who does it belong to? It's the brother, because he's got that wound, doesn't he? The murderer has to be. The question on my mind is, why is the handprint made in blood? Did the murderer study their hand in the girl's gunshot wound? Or were they injured prior to the shooting? There's so much to uncover here, and no time for a thorough investigation. Okay, we've got the bloody handprint. I think, I think we're good. I'm done. Very good, let's move the body off the street. Then we must hurry to the Palais Royal. Rest in peace, mademoiselle. I'll see to it that justice is done. Okay, everything's going just as planned. This guy keeps fucking up. We're on to this guy. The madame's probably fuming right now. She'll attack the Palais Royal. The Prime Minister will flee and then... Oh, excuse me, monsieur. What do you want? I'm busy. Don't you recognise me, monsieur? I know that my disguises are a little more complex than yours, but I assumed that you would recognise Prince Juan when you saw him. You? Prince Juan? Indeed. And you're Judge Romulus, the corrupt wolf. I know what you did. You tried to assassinate the king. You shot the croque monsieur, and just moments ago, I saw you murder a maiden at the Place de la Concorde. This dude's risking a lot by coming straight face to face. You truly are a vile individual, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if you got any proof of any of that stuff. I'm out. I also know that you're one half of the Viridian Killer. <laughs> On any other day, I would gut you where you stand, Fox. But as it happens, I'm a little bit busy today. Oh, the Viridian Killer is too busy to kill me. Is that the truth? Or is that bullet wound of yours starting to affect your prowess? You must have lost an awful lot of blood. What do I do? Sparrison. Hello, Monsieur Valpez. Oh, Monsieur Sparrison. Perfect timing. You who now? Oh, you're that fledgling. <laughs> I guess this is what they call being stuck between a rock and a hard place, huh? Monsieur Sparrison, be a dear. Help me restrain the Rudian killer. <laughs> you this guy. He's the killer. He looks more like Judge Robinless to me. Well, you'd be right about that too. Well, so he's two scumbags in one. Alrighty then. Got him. Mind the wound. Quit your whining, your honour. Very nice takedown, Monsieur Sparrison. You may want to check his pockets for weapons. He's something of a notorious killer, after all. No problem, what have we got? Oh, here we are. A pistol. Probably the one used to kill the maiden, I suspect. What else can you find? Oh, an eye patch. Weird. What would this wolf want with an eye patch? What indeed? Oh, this is bad. Very bad indeed. I don't get it. What's wrong with an eye patch? There's no time. Mousy. What's it? What's up? What's up? Take this eye patch to JJ Falcon. If my fears are correct, he'll be found somewhere at the Palais Royal right now. Tell him that this belonged to Remus's brother. Hurry. Right away. Go. I must go too. I need to find the other half of the Rudy and Killer pair before something terrible happens. Wait, Monsieur Vulpes. What am I supposed to do with this guy? You got his gun, don't you? March the wolf to the nearest police station and collect your reward for capturing Judge Romulus. Doesn't this guy want any money? Okay, what a strange day. <laughs> okay, outside the Palais Royal, the rebels have constructed a makeshift barricade out of furniture, branches, rocks and anything else they can find. From behind the wall, the rebels taunt the police and royal guards with chants. I'm growing impatient, pig. Confess your crimes. I've got nothing to confess, you filthy rebel. You and all your rebel friends, however, should confess to 1,000 counts of treason and public disorder. I will see each and every one of you hanged for your flagrant disregard of the law. Okay, your stubborn attitude is disgusting. A few days ago, you were seen at the holes. Witnesses saw you murder a beggar in cold blood. Today, a friar has testified to see you murder a girl, again completely unprovoked. I don't know why you continue to plead your innocence. But it doesn't matter. I don't need a confession to know that you're a killer. Uh, can you, can you not? The inspector didn't shoot the mademoiselle. Keep your beak closed. I'm done listening to your suggestions. 
This policeman is as guilty as every other monster in our decrepit justice system. It's my duty to execute him. Uh, Madame, Falcon has uncovered some pretty convincing evidence. I'd recommend you hear him out. Please, give me five minutes. I'll convince you that the inspector is innocent. Five minutes is precious time in the time like this. I can't afford it. Okay, what if you're wrong? Are you willing to see another dead innocent? Hmm. Thank you. Having my life saved by the Rudian killer. How humiliating. Quiet pig. Your life is mine until I say otherwise. Okay, first of all, let's recap on what Frere Remus had to say. Wait, where's the friar gone? He's a key witness. He scarpered as soon as he dropped the inspector off. Said he had some business to attend to. Business? Yeah, oh shit. Cannons? Man, oh man. Those barricades are looking pretty scary. But I mustn't fear, for I am a brave duck. I am the great officer Beck. Handsome, intelligent, strong. Truly, a fearless hero who will be remembered for... What? Hello, officer. Oh, you scared me, monsieur. Uh, monk. Friar, actually. Frere Remus. Listen, officer. I've got something of great importance to tell you. I was just passing by the rebel camp, and I overheard a conversation. This guy... This guy can't stop. He's, oh, he's really bad, isn't he? Okay, this sounds good. Do go on. They say they're going to launch an assault very soon, and when they do, they're going to rain hellfire on the palace. Ah, oh, just as I feared. What will we do? Simple, officer. As soon as you hear the first gunshot, you need to retaliate. Hit him with everything you've got, every cannon, every rifle, every piece of artillery. Don't leave a single piece of the barricade remaining. That is the only way you can be sure to survive. Wow, total annihilation. I like it. <laughs> but Friar, I'm confused. Aren't you, Christian? Yep, so what? I don't know. It's just that your idea doesn't sound very Christian-y. Ah, I see. You think this is a moral issue. Let me tell you a secret, my dearest duck friend. There is no God, no overarching morality or higher plan, no heaven to save the righteous or hell to punish the sinners. There is only you, your artillery, and 10,000 rebels who want to dine on the Peking duck tonight. Do you get me? That's an awful lot to take in. Then let me simplify. It's you or them. It's me or them. Wow. He really has got a forked tongue. Forget about the Friar Falcon. We all remember what you had to say. Present your case based on what you can recall. Okay, I will. But you may want to wipe that mouse off your shoulder first. What? Sorry, wipe what now? There he is, it's mousy. Monsieur Falcon. Special delivery from Renal Valpes. Uh, thanks. What is this? An eye patch. It was found in Remus's brother's clothing. Remus's brother's... Is this an eye patch belonging to Judge Romulus? That's interesting. Where's Romulus? No time, monsieur. Just take it. Okay, we got an eye patch. Got to run. But you have to do your best. Monsieur Volpez and Sparrison believe in you. Sparrison, you've seen him. How is he? No time, monsieur. Good luck. Are you quite done, Falcon? Uh, very much so. Let's begin the, the trial. Here we go. Okay, dokie. Let's remember what the friar said. Uh, Mademoiselle was approached. Let's talk about the victim. Who was she? What was her name? We don't know. Nobody knows. Just one more nameless girl stamped out under the boot of tyranny. Tragic. Very much so. And I want to see a world where it never happens again. Do you have another question about the victim? Uh, do we? No. What about the police lion? The friar said that the girl was approaching the police line at the time of the shooting. This didn't occur anywhere near the police line. Now, as I recall, the main police line was at the entrance of the Tillery in the Place de la Concorde. That's around where we were waiting. But this incident didn't occur there. It was a good 50, maybe 100 metres away. So? So what? It's a severe discrepancy in the friar's account of events. Maybe there was a police line there, but it moved. Maybe the friar was mistaken, and it was just a single officer. Does it really matter? Well, yeah. Yeah, it matters usually. It impacts how we view the narrative of events. How? Elaborate. Well, if it were just a single police officer, then it would be more private confrontation and, well, yeah. Okay, sorry Falcon, I don't buy it. An innocent being killed by a policeman is an innocent being killed by a policeman. The fry got some details wrong, but the overarching crime remains. We must stay focused on that. Uh, okay. Point blank and the gun. Fred Remus claimed that the inspector drew his gun. 
Is the inspector got a weapon? What cal I don't know. Let's try the other one. Let's try the other one. Point blank through the chest. Fair Remus claimed that the girl was shot. Point blank. In the back. The girl was clearly shot in the back. I know. I remember seeing the bullet wound for myself. But that's quite a glaring inaccuracy in the wolf's testimony. It is an inaccuracy, but it is an irrelevant inaccuracy. Does it really matter if the girl was shot in the front or the back? Either way, a girl died thanks to the pig's hands. It does matter. If the girl was shot in the front, then it might indicate a police confrontation turned ugly. But if you were shot in the back, then what? This could indicate that someone targeted and assassinated her before she could even react. That doesn't paint the inspector in a particularly flattering light, Falcon. Madame, you're missing the point. A shot to the back breaks the currently established narrative. The girl was targeted and murdered in a stealthy professional attack. Therefore, this was not an ordinary police confrontation. Okay, you've made an assumption there. You've assumed that just because the girl was shot in the back, she must have been stealthily killed. There are other possibilities. Perhaps the girl was scared by the police, started running away, and was shot as she fled. Not possible. If the girl was running, then she would have been at least a couple of steps away from the killer at the time of the shooting, right? Right. But I know, the killer was standing right behind the victim. They were less than a metre apart when the gun was fired. That close? How could you know that? Uh, Handprint. We saw a blooded handprint on the girl's shoulder. What do you make of that? Well, I assume any bloodstain would be bum to the victim. A mark made by the girl's dying breath, perhaps. Nope. It was the print of the left hand on the left shoulder, near her upper back. The angle and positioning of the print indicate it could only have been caused by another person. That's why I'm certain that the killer was right behind the girl at the time of the attack. Okay, quite the theory. But Falcon, you've left an important question unanswered. Why was the handprint bloody? The print was made of the victim's blood, right? So it can't possibly have been made prior to the shooting. The killer must have wiped his hand on the girl's clothing after she had already died. And if that's the case, then my suggested scenario is still possible. The girl may have been running from the police when she was shot. No. No. I'm still trying to work out details. But I know the print was made prior to the shooting. Maybe the shooter was injured and his head was already covered in blood. What? You talked big about breaking the established narrative and now you present me with a basis drivel. Well, where do we go from here? How does this handprint nonsense really affect the situation? Do you find something funny about this situation? He is missing an arm. I do. This whole troll is patently absurd. It's an animal caught through and through. But there's something particularly funny about that last exchange. You are both so focused on when and how this handprint was made that you missed the larger issue. I don't have a left hand, you idiot. I couldn't have possibly left that mark. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. <laughs> well, madame, what do you say to that? <laughs> Maybe. The handprint came from an accomplice, or maybe it had nothing to do with the incident, or... It feels good to see someone else speculating wildly for a change. Okay, fine. I don't have a solid explanation. I must concede that it's possible, maybe even likely, that the person who left the mark was the murderer. Therefore, as much as it pains me to say it, I must concede that the inspector probably did not shoot the girl. That's it. Inspector's off the hook. Nope. It's still the matter of the incident at the holes. Okay, what is this? I know nothing of this one. Well, wow, as if you don't know. A beggar rat was shot and killed in the holes a few days ago. The attacker was described as a scowling police officer who wore an eye patch. Does that sound familiar to you? Go on, Falcon. Explain the pig out of this one. Until five minutes ago, I was at a loss. But I was recently presented with a piece of evidence that makes the answer all too clear. This was a false flag operation. False flag, explain. Here we go. Madame. What do you know about Remus's twin brother, the man known as Romulus? Not much, only that he was forced to flee the country by an oppressive government around a month ago. Um, half truth. You see, it is correct that Romulus is being hunted by the police. But I've had the suspicion that the wolf was lurking in Paris itself, although I never managed to find definitive proof of this. Anyway, turns out my suspicions are well founded. He was recently apprehended, I think. You think? I don't know the details, but it doesn't matter. What's important is that a reliable friend found this on Romulus's person moments ago. An eye patch. Romulus has perfect vision. Why would he need something like this? There is only one plausible explanation. It's part of a disguise. Something to conceal his identity and make him appear as someone else. A disguise? 
You're saying that Romulus shot the beggar at just to frame the police inspector. Exactly, madame. It's no coincidence that Frere Remus happened to find the very same inspector just as another murder occurred today. So, Remus was in on it too. Two wolves working together to make this policeman look like a murderer. But, why? Why would they do that? To roll you up, to make you lust for violence, and if your actions today are anything to go by, I would say that they succeeded. Damn, I've been stupid. How did I let myself get misled by a couple of wolves? This trial is over. Go, Inspector, you're free. About time. You're letting him walk? Of course. It would be criminal to confine an innocent man any longer than necessary, even if the man is a bitter, stubborn pig. Your falcon. Uh, yeah. I don't understand you. You're stupid. You're reckless. But you fought Beacon Talon for my freedom. I'm starting to suspect that you really aren't a Viridian killer at all. Uh, it certainly took you a long time to pass that fact through your thick skull. Inspector, if you're still hunting that villain, maybe you should speak with Renard Volpes when this is all over. Uh, here he's been doing some research into the Viridian killer. Maybe he knows. Maybe I will. Madame, it appears that your gang of rebel filth don't intend on assaulting the palace anytime soon. I'll relay that information to the artillerymen. Maybe we can keep a peaceful standoff going until this blows over. Thank you. I appreciate that. All of you, stay out of trouble. So, uh, what happens now? We're going to continue our protest, peacefully. We're going to stand here chanting and shouting until the Prime Minister and the King both step down out of sheer humiliation. It might take days, weeks, but if we manage to change this country without one more person being harmed, then... Oh shit, well well, look who showed his face. Madame, I just saw the police inspector strolling out of here unharmed. Why did you let him go? Simple, we all had the discussion. And we came to the conclusion that I've been misled by a couple of wolves. Oh? How many lies have you fed me, Friar? Just how much damage have you done to further your own goals? Did you help your brother kill the beggar out in the holes? Did you watch the girl die by the Place de la Concorde? Now that I think about it, even the crockmachier's death was surrounded by details that made little sense. I don't know what to think anymore. You know the guy's a scumbag at least, ma'am. I say shoot him. <laughs> Pierre is right. We won't judge you for killing this man, madame. It's the least I deserve for my sins. Go ahead. Wow. What are you waiting for? Pull the trigger. Do it. Falcon, you have proven yourself as having clear judgment. What do you say? Let him live. Put him through the courts. You know what the right thing to do is. Show us what kind of leader you wish to be. You're right. I said that this would be a bloodless revolution, and I can't make any exceptions, not even for a monster like this wolf. Wow, this is amazing. Completely unprecedented. You've buckled all of my expectations, avoided every temptation, and opted for an option that shouldn't even exist. Well done, madame. Well done, Falcon. You have demonstrated the power of pacifism in its purest form. But unfortunately for both of you, I'm no pacifist. Get down. Oh shit. Suicide? Shoot himself in the head? What a loony. Hardly a surprise that the wolf would be too cowardly to face a real punishment. Man, this isn't right. It's not the solution I wanted either, Falcon, but I can't say I'll mourn the friar's death. No, that's not what I meant. I meant that it doesn't make sense for him to kill himself so abruptly. And that comment of his, it was almost like, I think we need to get out of here, all of us, right now. Falcon, what are you talking about? Yeah, that was the signal. Ah, oh, that was the gunshot. Really close too. Uh, I can't afford to hesitate. It's me or them. No, officer, hold your fire. No way. I can't afford to take chances. It's me or them. No, you little dickhead. Fire every cannon. No. <laughs> oh shit. That's not good. Oh fuck, slaughter. This isn't the happy ending I wanted. <laughs> no, no, definitely not good. That was the signal, that was it. Oh no. What did he do? Can anyone hear me? Piero, Fontaine. 
Hello? Anyone? I'm here, madame. Falcon. Of all the people. I think... I think I made a mistake, Falcon. Where did I go wrong? Was it when I lost my temper overseeing that dead girl? Or was it earlier when I shot the prosecutor? Or was it earlier still when I first listened to that monstrous friar in the first place? I've made a lot of mistakes. We've all made mistakes, madame. Most people's mistakes don't spark bloody revolutions. Can you move? I don't think so. Give me a minute. I think I can clear some of the rubble. Mmm. This is... All kinds of bad things have happened. Okay. Where are we off to? That's by Notre Dame. Okay. Dear Monsieur Volpez. I am writing to you from the Demiao Railway Express. Modern technology truly is amazing. I have decided to take your advice. And I've gone on a vacation until things settle down. The King fleeing to Britain... The Second Republic taking over? It's all crazy stuff. Anyway, before I left, you asked if I knew what happened to Falcon. Well, I got my hands on the copy of the official police report, and it says that Falcon died during the attack on the barricade. But it also says that the police didn't find a body, the same as Leone Boomer. Weird, huh? Rumour is that he was probably blown away by cannon fire, but that doesn't sound right to me. The Falcon I knew was tough and intuitive. I think he found a way to escape and survive. So, in my opinion, he's still out there. It's possible, isn't it? Anyway, I should wrap this letter up, because I'm about to reach my stop, Vienna. I'll let you know how Mademoiselle Signy and her parents are doing. Oh well, she was from the first case. Maybe you could pay a visit sometime. Send my regards to Mousy. Yours sincerely, Sparrison. P.S. I see a person selling Mini Hamstrudel. What? What is that? PPS. It's delicious. That's what that is. <laughs> I think I pronounced it wrong, but it was delicious. And that is it. That is the end of Aviary Attorney. We have done all three endings and all the major cases. And it was really fun. Interesting story, good characters, fun humour. It was really, really enjoyable. And I hope you enjoyed it as well if you made it this far. This is Usha signing off, and hopefully I'll see you next time.